What is up, everyone? We are back after a long time, but we're back. We have a new setup. The sound should be fantastic. This is the Golden Octagon MMA podcast. I am Matt Anderson. On the other side of your screen is Dorian Rose. I'm not going to say left or right because I don't know which side he is going to be on with this, when this goes up. So just like that, man, it's been a minute. Last night's car was amazing. Before we get into that, how are you doing today, man? And how have you been doing over this long break of this past like month that we haven't filmed? Hey man, all I can say is we've been cooking. We've been cooking, okay. We've been, we've been trying to, we've been trying to get a, a nice little structure set for you guys and everything. So um, we feel real good about the show today. Great fights last night. Um, great card overall. Really good night. And uh, yeah, man, I'm excited to be back and let's do this thing, man. I know last night's card was a great one, and it was a perfect. Uh, podcast to come back on we haven't filmed in a minute as we have said it's just been trying to work out all the audio issues it started to come back a little bit today but it did not get us down we are back we are we powered through we powered through (laughs) we did so i guess uh going to be a kind of a new little rundown on uh like today's show if you will we don't really have a topic list we're just kind of going going to kind of just rant on tell you about what we thought of last night's fart uh last night's farts there i go already doing it already doing it <laughs> last night's fights um what to look forward to in the upcoming weeks and just any other news anything like that so we're not going to waste any more time man last night's car door and i know you are chomping at the bit to talk about izzy so just let me fucking have it man what do you got to say about last night's fights um, I, I think in the wise words of, of Roy Jones, y'all must have forgot, you know, I think a lot of people coming off the Yon fight, a lot of people thought that Marvin was going to be able to take him down pretty easy. And a lot of the comparisons were, um, you know, this is similar to the Yon fight, but at 185. And I just don't think that that was really true because I thought that Marvin um, although he is a little bit more developed than what he was a few years ago when him and Izzy fought the first time, um, I don't think he's anywhere near on the level of striking as far as Jan is. Um, you know, Jan has a lot more power, um, and he's a lot more of a well-rounded fighter than Marvin is. But um, this thought Izzy just really just dominated the fight from beginning to end. You know, he was set up the leg kicks beautifully, as he always does. Um, the one thing I can really give Marvin credit for though, during the fight was, man, Izzy was trying his damnedest to land the question mark kick outside the head. Marvin was really good about ducking or getting his head back just out of the way, just so he can avoid those big shots. So Izzy didn't really dominate him in the sense of beating him from pillar to post, but you could see during that fight, Marvin had absolutely no chance during the fight because even when he landed the takedown and got Izzy's back and he went under the, he had his arm close to the, uh, under the neck to try to secure the rear neck and choke. Um, Izzy looked calm as can be flip position, got on top, you know, was even playing around with him there at the end when, when Marvin was just leaning on the cage and, and holding him, trying to get his breath back. And, and Izzy was, uh, speaking of farts, you know, he was playing with his fart box sitting there, grabbing his butt as uh as the rounds ended in round four so i just thought overall even though the fight wasn't the fight of the year or anything like that i just thought the performance was really good by izzy um and just a good bounce back to uh, get his groove back after his first loss coming off a yawn i i don't even know what to say like it was just a, a like aside from it was a spectacular performance for Izzy, man. He just dominated him all five rounds. I thought it was hilarious that at the end, Marvin still thought he won that fight, dude. It was just like, Jesus. It just shows you how delusional Marvin Vittori is. But I saw a quite a few comparisons to the Yon fight, to like this fight, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys got to go watch the Paulo Costa fight. I really thought it was the same fight over again, just – but Tori's a little bit tougher than Costa is, and he kind of showed that there, man. He's, a, I guess, like a little bit um, smarter, if you will. He has 
like better head movement, but overall, is he just a class above everyone else at 185? And it shows, man. It really does show. Yeah, well, I, I, I wouldn't really necessarily compare it to the Costa fight because Costa, he just absolutely obliterated him, and Costa just sat there and ate the shots. At least, yeah. you know, Vittori... Yeah, like he had a little bit better head movement, but just the leg kicks over and over and over, and it just shows that like Vittori is a little bit tougher, I like, think Costa was, and has a slightly he, better head movement. Yeah, he he has a hell of a chin. He has a uh, really good defense as far as you know avoiding shots or not really getting the full brunt of the shots. You know, Costa when they were fighting, he was literally getting the full impact of Izzy's punches and kicks, and that's why, you know, Izzy was able to get him out of there as early as he was. Um, I do think Marvin's a much smarter fighter than Casa in that sense, that he's not going to stand in the line of danger and just take shots. But I just thought that overall, as far as the matchup went, um, I just thought Marvin was absolutely uh, just overmatched. Even when he took him down, uh, you know, a lot of people were saying, oh, well, uh, Marvin got a takedown in the center of the cage. I think he got one early when he grabbed uh, Izzy's leg when he went for the leg kick and took him down. And everybody was saying, oh, well, he took him down in the middle of the cage. You know, he's going to hold him down for the rest of the round. And Izzy was able to get back to the cage, get back up to his feet. He does this little thing when he gets both hands on the wrist of the guy and he pulls and he gets out and he does it every single time in middleweight. And it's like, nobody knows how to stop it, but it just goes to show that even with all the, the well-balanced game that Marvin has, it just shows that Izzy's just a, a notch above because he's able to get back up on his feet whenever he's, um, back down on his back. He was never in any true danger in the fight and he was able to, uh, pick, Marvin apart for all five rounds and I, I don't see to your point Marvin saying that he thought he won the fight I mean I, I don't see where he won a round let alone the fight so um just a really good performance by Izzy great bounce back win and and I love the call out after the fact calling out Robert Whitaker as well um a guy who we you know on our one of our last podcasts we I know I was standing on the mountaintop screaming that Robert Whitaker deserved his next chance so um, I, I love that Izzy called him out, but told him it was going to be on his terms, not Rob's terms. So uh, really glad that Izzy's moving forward in the in the division, won the defendant's belts, and, and basically taking all covers at this point. Fair enough, fair enough. So, like, you want to see Rob fight Izzy next. <sighs> Who do you want to see fight like Vittori next? He's still there up at the top, man. There's a lot of contenders there at the top that just don't really have a place yet me personally i wouldn't mind seeing costa versus ug vittori there man like it just let's just run these two into each other and just see what happens there yeah i i would think uh just off the top of my head i would probably think um costa or if not um i, I don't know if darren till gets a win against Derek brunson you know i know that uh uh, Izzy and Rob are going to be fighting. So maybe, uh, you know, Vittori and Till were supposed to uh, fight. What was it? It was earlier this year, right? Before Kevin Holland took the spot. So uh, maybe if Darren Till, uh, Derek Brunson, maybe the winner of them two, maybe Paula Costa. Um, I do think that Marvin's going to have to go to the back of the line. And that's already his second loss to Izzy. So um, unless Izzy loses the belt, I don't see how there's any way, you know, he gets another title shot. Um, so I just think for him, he just has to go to the back of the line, back to the drawing board. And, and really, I would like to see the Costa fight. That would really be a good matchup. And I would, I would like to see how that would play out and really just like to see Costa get back in there. Like, what has he been doing here lately? Hey man, he's been drinking wine and his special juice as he calls it. Well, (laughs) whatever is in that man, that's just what he's been up to and asking for more money, you know, complaining, Wishing he would have started a YouTube channel at age 13. <laughs> That's what Dana said. But That's you stupid, know, man. Um, one thing that I just kind of realized, like about uh, I like this fight, and I'm actually kind of glad that we stayed here for just a second because I knew I would like kind of wanted to um, I like to bring it up. You and me are both huge Luke Thomas fans, and he has like said this multiple times. If you try to take down Izzy when his back is 
Um, this is up against like the cage man. He has lights out defense there, dude. You're not getting him down there. And it seems like every one of these dudes just keep trying to push him into the fence. And Marvin kept trying it too. He got one takedown out in, uh, in the middle, but Izzy popped right back up. And aside from that, dude, it's like every time he would just get tired trying to push him right against the cage. And as you said, he would just pull his arm and then right out the other side. Every single time it was he he just knew exactly what to do. But uh, I really don't have anything else to say on this fight besides, dude, Izzy just a class ahead of everyone else, dude. And I don't see the Rob fight going any different the second time around. I think he's gonna probably gonna knock him out again, dude. Um, I, I, we got a while to the fight, so we can we can talk about it in due time. October, but just a, he said October. He wanted it in October. Yeah, and I'm sure Rob would be fine with that too. That's plenty of time because that's when he kind of wanted to come back anyway. It was around that mm-hmm. time, so sounds like they should be able to to make things work there. But um, just one last point on the. Uh, Izzy Vittori fight before we move on. Oh, another reason why Izzy was able to get him tired as well. Man, Izzy's head movement is crazy. When he would back up against the cage and Marvin kept headhunting, and even Joe Rogan had pointed out, like, man, Vittori is just headhunting on the cage. He needs to go to the body. Um, Izzy's head movement against the cage was absolutely ridiculous. You know, Marvin would pin him up against the cage, and when he would try to take him down, Izzy would, you know, nine times out of ten stuff is takedown and then he kept hitting him with the head movement and marvin just kept swinging and kept missing so um just is he just outclass him in, in every sense and and like i said earlier glad to see that he's wanting to stay stay at 185 and defend his throne and and take all comers at this point because he's an active champion anyway and that's that's one more point i wanted to make up uh bring up as well as far as people being active that's one thing that even amber had uh my wife had pointed out was that um bro he's he's active like izzy likes to fight he doesn't bullshit as far as uh i need more money or this or that he he gets in there and he does the damn thing and, and he likes fighting um, seems like him and the UFC are on really good terms. So just glad to see him being one of the superstars of the sport right now and not necessarily being a company man, but having the UFC and him be on the same page and they're able to move forward and keep doing business because Izzy definitely brings in, um, a lot of viewers. He's one of the top stars in the sport right now. So, um, yeah, really excited to see how they're on the same page and, and moving forward. Cool. Cool. Just crazy. I mean, like, like the fight wasn't even that wild all around. It was just the same thing over and over all five rounds and just outclassed them. So before we spend, I don't know how, however much time we've been spending on this fight, let's talk about Moreno versus Figgy, man. How do I say this? We talked about this a few days ago. You were dead. You're like, man, there's no way Brandon Romero beats Figgy, dude. He just – he barely lost last time or draw last time, and he just beat him every other round, dude. But you see who made the adjustments here, and Brandon Moreno came out, just put the beats on Figgy, dropped him twice, end up choking him out, dude. What happened here, man? What went, um, I guess, array of plans for what you thought was going to happen? Well, I thought that actually uh, Figgy would have kept the same pace that he did in the first fight. Um, Because I had said that, you know, Moreno has a a rock solid chance. And honestly, you know, I told you multiple times going – uh, into the fight that I watched that first fight and that fight was absolutely fight of the year and that fight was it was so back and forth but watching that fight I felt like Figueredo had won that fight three rounds is two Figueredo had the point deduction where he had the low blow in the fight um, me and my wife were actually talking about the fight the first fight the other day and my wife actually forgot that Moreno had lost or that it was a draw and she thought he had lost the fight just from the perspective of if you actually think about watching that fight, who won? Figueroa definitely won the fight. So um, with that being a draw the last fight, that was a reason why I think that uh, Moreno got the rematch. So basically just to spin it full circle, I thought if the second fight played out like the first one, 
Figueredo landing the absolute hammers that he does, that Moreno, there's no way he's going to hold up for five rounds and he can't keep relying on his chin. But Figueredo came out and he was a lot more reserved in the first round. And Brandon Moreno was playing none of those games because he came out right away. And I love that little left hook that he throws at the body. He crushes people with that. And he crushed Figueredo a couple of times in the first fight with it. And he came out and was mixing it up to the body and to the head. And uh, you could see that Figueredo was trying to really put it on there at the end of the first round. And it looks like he goes to throw a big right hand. And as soon as he does, Moreno just, wow, just catches him with a jab perfectly. And does his best Usman impersonation and uh, drops him with a jab, um, gets on him and, and, and ends the round well. And then I just thought that from there on out, um, Figgy was just absolutely dominated. Um, I just thought that, you know, he tried to pick up the pace in the second round. Brandon Moreno was able to get the takedown, you know, kind of wear on him, beat on him a little bit on the ground as well. And then uh, there in the third round, he was able to secure the the rear naked choke and, and get the dub, man. I just thought that, um, honestly, Moreno outclassed him in every way. You know, that fight last year was so evenly matched, even in terms of, like, the strike numbers. But, man, just that second fight, I think you said it best, man. Moreno just made those adjustments. Um, he made the adjustments that Figueredo didn't. And uh, Moreno outclassed him from beginning to end of that fight. And it really be a beautiful moment when he just stood up and he just kind of looked at the crowd. Like, even talking about it right now, I'm actually starting to dude, get, dude. like, the hairs dude. on my arm stand me, up, dude. Me as well, me as well, yeah. Like, he, like he stands up. Just a and moment, it, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's such a moment, dude. Like, he just stands up, and it, it's so genuine. He just looks in the crowd, and he's just like, man, did I do this? Did I? And all of a sudden, his coaches come in. And it's just, yeah. it settles in with him. And then he yeah. just kind of falls over and starts like bawling, crying because, you know, it's all settling in. So um, just a really cool moment for uh, Moreno starting from the ultimate fighter, getting cut in the UFC and then uh, coming back in 2019, going on about a three, four fight win streak to secure a title fight and uh, to turn it around full circle and, and become the champ, the first ever Mexican born champion. Just uh, just hats off to Moreno, man, and uh, yeah. couldn't be more happy for him. It's it's hard to explain, like because uh, so like my girlfriend, definitely Mexican, and it's like she gets uh, she like watches like all the fights with me, but just her like last night, you just saw something like I've never seen her take pictures like of the TV, dude. Like you just know that this what happened last night uh, like a star was born for an entire country like this is the first time that like this has happened mexico has its first ufc champion i'm sorry mexican born ufc champion there has been kane velasquez yes but it's like he wasn't born in mexico this is just something for all mexicans to just all be proud of congratulations like congratulations brandon moreno like you just you like you just felt good for him even though like it's like anyone could have bet like for figgy but you had to have just when he got up and just stared you're like oh good like you felt it for him like you're like you were like he did it he did it he did it and then in his post-fight speech i had to (laughs) I had to ask my girlfriend because I had no clue what he said. I was like, what, what do you say? He goes, um, I come from a country like where everyone says you can do it. You can do it. But sometimes you can't do it. But tonight I fucking did it. And, and like, it, like and she told me that and I was like, oh, that makes it so much better. Yeah. Like, dude, that's great, dude. Like, fuck yeah, dude. Go Vernon Moreno. Congratulations. We have another star at 125, man. The 125 division is growing. We've got Askar Askarov that was tweeting at him just a little bit, so they had unfinished business. Alexandre Pantoja already beat Moreno there. There's the other fight with Roy Val that I wouldn't mind getting seeing ran back because uh, of the way that one uh, ended. Davidson is still a star, so, dude, who knows what's going to happen there. Is Cody Garbrandt going to come down to the 125? Dude, there's just so much could be happening at 125, and it's definitely a great time to be a fan, dude. Anything else on this fight, like specifically before we get into you know what it is, 209's greatest 
Yeah, I, I, well, I think you really hit the point on the head there with the just the division being loaded now, man. I mean, just a whole crop of talent coming up. Um, really exciting uh, matchups that can be made in the future, you know, whether it is a Brandon Roy Vol rematch, you know, with the way that fight ended. Um, you know, Brandon Moreno would be having to do some rematches for the spectacular fights, and I, I hope he can get motivated for those, because a lot of times they say that rematches are a little bit harder to get motivated for, even though he got motivated uh, more this time. But uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I really do think that uh, this division is going to be super exciting moving forward, and and love that Brandon Moreno, you know, started from the bottom tough. He actually lost to Alexander Pantoja twice because he actually lost to Alexander Pantoja on the Ultimate Fighter when he uh, got uh, his loss on there. Lost to him actually in the UFC as well. So he's actually lost to him twice. But uh, yeah. so you know but that other, guy's chomping at the bit. Like, uh, yeah, get up there. Uh, right. Yeah, like I'm the one that can beat him. But but yeah, man, just really happy for Moreno. And uh, yeah, that was a hell of a performance for him. A true feel good story, dude. Like no one can tell me like you did not feel anything when you saw that happen last night. Just the crowd exploded, like a uh, a huge Hispanic crowd there, there in um I guess like the Phoenix area. You mm-hmm. you, you just felt amazing for him. So here we go, man. Are you ready to get into this the Leon Edwards versus Nate Diaz, my man? It's it's just crazy, wow, man. Wow, dude, it's just crazy. Like, before I say anything else from this point on, Leon Edwards was expected to win this fight. He did the majority of the fight as he should. He is composed. He doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't play into like the game plan. So what happened should have happened at the outcome in the end, however you want to say it. But here we go. Let me talk about Nate Diaz for a second. How fun is Nate Diaz, dude? Like, this dude is just, like, messing around with him the entire fight. My girlfriend hated it, by the way. She's like, what is he doing? I'm like, this is Nate Diaz. Just watch. Just watch. You never know what's coming. And sure enough, dude, after getting pretty much his ass kicked for four rounds, a minute left in the fifth round, dude, he catches Leon with a, the cleanest one-two, dude, that I've, I've ever seen Nate land, dude. It, like, he hit Connor with that same thing, but this was different. Like, you saw, like, Leon was stumbly for a few seconds there and put his back on the fence to catch himself. Like, I don't know if it was that close, but he was on the fence for sure. He, there was a chance that he could have fell with one or two more shots it almost kind of looked like Nate didn't believe it. He like ran up to him for a second and was like, I was like, I know you're kidding. And he was like, Oh shit, this guy's really hurt. And he's, and he, then he started putting it on. It was almost like, Nate, if you just would have jumped on him right there, man, you probably could have finished that fight. And we would have Nate Diaz versus Kamara Usman in the next title shot before Colby Covington, man. But what happened should have happened at the end. Nate Diaz, a super fun fighter. I feel like because of that sequence at the end, he lost nothing. Everyone is still a huge Nate Diaz fan, and he won himself back over there because I almost feel like if he just would have done that all five rounds and didn't accomplish anything, dude, it's like everyone would have been like, come on now, like like you just clown the whole time and didn't do anything. But he caught him at the end. Nate Diaz, the 209 special, clowned him the whole fight, and then a minute left, made it ugly, made it what he was trying to do the entire time. Hit Leon, almost got him out of there, but in the end, Leon Edwards, by decision, dude. What do you got to say about this one? Sorry, I just kind of spouted off for you. That's <laughs> a few minutes. No, nah, I mean, I, I did the first two topics, so it's not like, uh, you know, <laughs> I went hogging the mic there for a minute either, but – uh. No, I just thought, uh, you know, overall outside of the fifth round, of course, just it. I just thought it was a typical Leon Edwards performance, and you know, I've always, I've always shown the, him the respect that I think he deserves in terms of he's just he's just a really good fighter. That's that's what he is. He's a really good fighter. He's really well rounded. Nate Diaz um, said it best. He, he's a really yeah, good fighter. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a really good fighter. He's very well rounded. Um, he doesn't do anything in terms of taking a lot of risk. Um, he's going to. Uh, I'm not going to say do the bare minimum, 
to to get the win, but he's not going to put himself in the ultimate danger as well to get the win. If he can stand outside and pick you apart or, um, you know, how he was doing with Nate Diaz is chopping his leg up. Um, if he can do that for all five rounds, he's very content with doing that, landing some good elbows in the clinch. Um, man, just Nate Diaz, just a hell of a chin on him, dude, because, man, Leon was actually, he looked a little fired up. He was landing some really big shots on Nate, and he was landing some good elbows. Um, man, when he was getting out of the break on the clinch and was throwing the elbows over the top, man, he was throwing those elbows with ruthless intent and was trying to take Nate's head off. And just Nate, just as as typical fashion, you know, he just eats the shots and, and keeps moving forward. And um, I, I thought, you know, Nate, Nate had some moments in there where it wasn't a complete blowout. Like, he was losing the rounds, but he would have – he would have some moments in between each round of the first four rounds. Just nothing significant enough for to make the judges say, hey, he won this round. But then there in that fifth round, so I'll, I'll tell you this. The first four rounds, it was obvious that, that Leon was winning. And I would said what I would said last night, uh, or I said what I said earlier last night to my wife. I said, this is a typical Leon Edwards fight. So you know what I did? I started – going in my kitchen and I started making some leftovers that I had from the night before. <laughs> no, I, I, I had a oh, so man. I just I so and, and, and my kitchen is not far from my living room but you know I, I heard Leon land a few shots like I could hear the shots land in the kitchen but I just got a burger and a hot dog in the microwave just trying to warm it up for a minute because I'm like man Leon Edwards is just going to ride this thing out till it win. and all of a sudden I hear Joe Rogan go oh and my wife goes Nate and I literally turn around and I sprint to the living room and I go, oh shit. And I see Leon Edwards is going like this. And then Nate Diaz starts doing the shuffling like this and starts pointing at him. And we're like, dude, put your foot on the gas and put him out. Like, what are you doing? But I missed the first part of that when he landed the punch because I was making leftovers because I just assumed the fight was going to be over. So. For Nate to actually come back, dude, it really goes to show for him. Like, he's a true five-round fighter. Like, he is the true definition. Most guys don't like going five rounds. Like, if you ask Derek Lewis, Derek Lewis will tell you straight up, hell nah, stop giving me five-round fights. I, I prefer a three-round fight. Nate is the true definition of a five-round fighter, man, because he is dangerous at all moments in the fight. It doesn't matter uh, whether it's the first minute of the first round or the last minute of the last round, as he displayed last night, landing that big left hand. And um, I think you kind of hit the, the nail on the head, too, with um, his stock. That was the first thing I actually said to my wife last night was, if that fight had it ended the way the first four rounds went, everybody would have just shrugged their shoulders and said, man, Nate's cool, but, like, come on, man, all you're doing is clowning. But for him to have such a significant moment in that fight, Almost every comment I've seen on social media, everybody that has talked to me about it has said, if Nate Diaz had a pressure him instead of clowning, he could have finished him. That is enough redemption for him to move forward, and people are still going to want to watch him fight because he had one shining moment. But he could have finished him, and now people are getting his back saying, well, he was clowning, so that's why he didn't get the finish. But if he got the finish, you know, He'd be uh, fighting Usman right now. So um, I and, think that, and, that last when, little sink was, was redemption. When in reality, it's like, no. Like, Leon had whooped his ass for four rounds. Did the same thing that you did, apparently. Was thinking about some leftovers in the microwave, thinking he has this one in the bag. And then Nate Diaz had said, oh, you're hungry? How about a one-two, dude? <laughs> Leon Please. Edwards loves, loves getting these two three-piece combos, dude. They're his favorite. <laughs> I wouldn't mind maybe seeing Leon versus Jorge because you know Colby's getting that next title shot. And to be honest, I don't want to see Leon fight Usman after that performance. Like, you, bro, you didn't do anything. Like, you won, yeah, but you literally didn't put your foot on the gas. At all. You have zero – I don't want to say zero finishing instinct, but at the same time, it's like, man – He's the Kalen Shikagian at welterweight. The decision king. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And so it's just like 
he's a good fighter, but man, you got to do more than that to win over the fans to get this title shot because Colby, dude, whether you like him or not, he is entertaining. That was Kamara's closest fight. Although I do see Usman licking his chops like, oh, that's a way easier fight than the, than the Colby fight. It could happen, dude. I could see Usman wanting to fight Leon over Colby and some shit happening there, but I really hope that they make the Colby versus Usman fight next. Um, anything? Uh, who do you want to see uh, each one of these guys fight or not fight? Uh, I mean, for Nate, I mean, you can pretty much pin him up against anybody. I still question why he wanted to fight Leon Edwards. I mean, I know he was saying that, you know, he respected that he was on a long win streak and that, you know, basically they thought that Leon Edwards was the easiest fight in the top four or five in the welterweight division to be able to leap him uh, to get the title shot had he had won. I mean, I, I would probably say either him or Gilbert Burns. I would say that I think Nate beat uh i i would say gilbert's an easier fight than uh than colby or usman would be but i i, I mean nate you can pretty much pin him up against anybody i wouldn't mind seeing the uh the masvidal rematch or mcgregor rematch either one of those um leon edwards actually man if i had to say probably the winner between gilbert burns and, and stephen thompson you know because i i don't know if necessarily each one is going to deserve a title shot after um, you know, I don't think Gilbert Burns is going to get a title shot if he wins. Stephen Thompson, with him being a little bit older, they might try to hold him back. You never know how it's going to go. Um, so I, I can see Leon fighting possibly the winner between them two because I agree. Don't think Leon really did enough to really wow the people to say, hey, I need to see him versus Usman next. I don't know if I would say that Leon's an easier fight than and Colby. And it's just from the sense of, where Leon's really not going to put himself in any danger, and he has really good takedown defense. Um, you know, he's going to make Usman try to uh, pressure him a little bit more, and Leon can set up traps in terms of striking. So I just think they provide a different challenge for him. But, uh, but yeah, I don't think Leon's going to get a title shot after that. No way. I just don't see it. I mean, it could happen. But... And, and with the way the round ended. Like, you, I mean, damn, dude, you almost got knocked out by Nate after you were winning all four rounds. Like... Yeah, honestly, I and you know I was batting for Leon to get a, a title shot before, but after that performance, I I can't say that I was really wild yeah. to want to see him against Usman. I feel you. I feel you. All right, dude. I mean, well, that's it for I guess the three main fights uh, on the card. Anything else on those three? Let me pull up the rest of the uh, of the main card. We had oh, we had uh, Blah Muhammad. Just pretty much just a dominant like performance um, over an older Maya man. It's like you kind of saw like what was going to happen there. And then Jamal Hill, dude, his arm, dude. And I don't know if you've heard, dude, his arm is actually. It was that bro. How? How? And then so I was doing some YouTubing and I came across, you know, I like the doctor that explains like all the thing. And he was like explaining how like if it's turned like like to the outside that the elbow can come out of like the area like without it breaking. So like it was almost like his elbow just came out of the hole opposed to like breaking. But thankfully he's okay, dude. He has full merit. Full range of motion, as I heard somewhere, dude. But crazy uh, injury, but so lucky at the same time, dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like uh, like Jamal Hill. Like, that's just crazy that um, his arm was not broken after that. Because so, so when that fight ended, um, my wife, because I, I was telling you, she had just walked into the room at that time. Mm -hmm. It right when that Jamal Hill fight ended, and I told her, I said, you do not want to see this. And she looked up, and then I showed her the re replay, and then she was like, oh, well, the Chris Weidman injury was worse. And I was like, man, I'm not going to lie. I think the Jamal Hill one might be worse because he got his arm twisted like four different ways. Like it went out and in, and then he twisted it around and spun it up a little bit more. And then when he was – when Paul Craig had him in the triangle – and he was, like, just slamming him. Jamal Hill's arm was literally just flopping like a damn noodle. Just sitting there just flopping. I'm like, what the hell is this? Why is this ref not stopping the fight? 
Um, that's what I was more surprised of than anything, that the ref literally watched his arm look like it was falling off of his body, and he's just, just letting it go. Um, and, and the other point of that fight is I wonder, I really wonder how mad gamblers were that um, he ended up getting the fight by uh, a TKO win instead of a submission win, considering a submission was the one that caused the TKO. So um, I really would like to get a gambler's perspective on uh, how that played out for them over the weekend. But uh, that was a, that was a wild ass sequence, dude. Definitely. And uh, because you kind of no sold my little segue there, do you know, uh, dude, he is so lucky that that is not broken. And you know who else is lucky on the card? Lauren Murphy, dude. Lauren Murphy gets the dub here, dude. <laughs> Moving down to the prelims on, on the card. Uh, she gets it done. Brad Riddell gets it done. And Mavsar Ivloyev, uh, as well as Eric Anders. So those are our four prelims there. Where do you want to start um, here, man? Man, I, I got to start with what I've already told you. Fight of the year. Um, Drew Dover and Brad Riddell. I mean, holy smokes, dude. I mean, they, when I seen that card on the fight, or uh, yeah, when I seen that fight on the card, here I go calling it a, a, a fight of card like you are now. But when I seen this fight was slated on this card, Man, I, I was absolutely excited. I, and I told you earlier in the week, as soon as I seen it, I was surprised that Brad Riddell was an underdog um, just because I thought that Drew Dubber likes to strike a lot. And I thought who was the more potent striker that Brad Riddell was. But, um, man, they both came out and was just throwing haymakers from the beginning. Uh, Brad Riddell getting dropped by that big left-handed Dober early in round one. Um, but... Dober was able to it wasn't able to get the finish in that sequence. Brad Riddell got back up and actually won that last little sequence of the first round. And at the end of the first round, they both had the same number of strikes against one another. So the second round starts going similar to the same. Drew Dober starts around hot. And then uh he you know he's landing a couple of big left hands himself, landing some good kicks, uh going for some takedowns. And uh Brad Riddell, I thought he had won the last sequence of that round as well. But they ended the second round with the same number of strikes, too. 22. It is crazy. So if you're judging this fight, I mean, I, all all props to you guys because holy smokes, that fight was so hard to uh, judge watching the fight live. But um, that third round, it was a little bit easier to score because I thought Brad Riddell was really putting the pressure on him, landing big shots against Dober. I thought Dober actually tried to take the first half of that round off, was trying to catch his win, and then put the pressure on the second half because at the second half of the third round, he really started turning it up against Riddell and was throwing big shots. But he got a little reckless there at the end, and Brad Riddell hit him with a beautiful right left and when he came with the left over top he hurt Dober bad and I think similar to Nate Diaz I don't think Riddell realized he had him hurt in the moment and you could see Dober's body language just change completely and he just steps back but just great just instincts from both fighters to be hurt significantly in the fight and just to have the survival instincts to to stay in there and for both of them to weather the storm like that dude that was such an evenly matched fight um, and like I said, to this point this year, I, I haven't seen a fight better. I mean, those two dudes, they're both built like brick shit houses. Like they're both just, just thick, big ass dudes with power. Um, and yeah, that was definitely fight of the year in, in my book so far. I mean, there could be a fight that, uh, you know, supersedes it, but as of right now, there had not been a fight better in 2021 than Brad Riddell versus Drew Dober. <sighs> debatable, debatable. I would have to go back and just look. I do know last week, Miguel Baeza or Santiago Ponzinibbio, dude, that was a hell of a fight, too. I'm like, no. I'm telling you, that was a hell of a no, fight. That was a, that was a very good fight. As I watched it, too, that fight did not have anywhere near. And that, that fight had a lot of action. That fight did not have the action that, that Brad Riddell and they, they were both good fights. I, I don't know. I don't know. But – Dude, the toughness on Drew Dober, dude. Like, I would have to say I did have a bet Drew Dober finishing Brad Riddell. So, when he came out and dropped him, dude, I was like, oh, shit, here we go. Here we go. But the toughness on Riddell, the toughness on Dober, dude. And Joe Rogan kept saying it. 
uh, Drew Dober has a head like a fire hydrant, dude. The thing could put out a house fire. He said that, and I died laughing. I was like, oh, it's so hilarious, dude. But but it's both, true, man. Both they both they both do. Opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess so we'll move right along to uh, the next fight. Eric Anders just really just – I don't know if he won – all the rounds decisively, but not a whole lot done. I think he uh, he um had already kind of knew that he like won the last fight that they just happened not too long ago. So I'm surprised that Eric Anders by decision was at like a like plus two hundred like or something like that. I was like, oh, I'm definitely taking that, you know. So that was easy enough. Probably not plus two hundred. Probably like plus like one sixty like or something like that. But still. Plus odds, I'm like, I'm definitely taking that. So I cashed out on, um, I like that one right there. But anything on that fight, um, like specifically, man? Um, yeah, just uh, just a weird performance. But Eric Anders, he's been doing this thing here lately where he just he crashes people into the fence and he he tries to shoot for he tries to lock his hands behind their back and he he'll just hang on the fence. And it's just just really weird. I, I one of the things that I heard the commentator say was that I guess one of the things he's been trying to work on is uh, his distance management. You know, I guess he can't really decide to get into range and whether you know as soon as he gets too close, you know, he tries to crash when he throws the left hand and then he just ends up in a grappling sequence. Um, just seems like he almost as if he's like gone back to the drawing board or, or something like that. You know, I felt like early on in his fights he was a lot more aggressive. Now I just feel like he tries to be a little bit more measured, but it just it doesn't look as um it doesn't look like the old Eric Anders. But but other than that, you know, uh way for him to to get back in the in the winning uh column. So um solid performance by Eric Anders. Um Darren Suter didn't really have anything for him in terms of the, the wrestling or anything like that. So um Eric Anders adding more wrinkles to his game. So um good win for him. Definitely not the best fight for sure. Um, so yeah. we, uh, I kind of already talked about like a little bit. Lauren Murphy getting it done over JoJo Calderwood, dude. I thought JoJo clear as day won round one and three. Lauren Murphy did win round two, dominant, held her down the entire uh, round, if you will. But dude, the meth must be strong in Arizona, dude, because this was one of two judgings i'm like what alexis davis too dude alexis davis got fucking robbed i may be biased a little bit because i did have a bet on her to win by decision but in in um, her fight dude she outstruck the chick in round two and three with leg kicks over and over again i thought for sure she won round two and three but she was 30 27 to the other girl dude I was talking to multiple people, and everyone is like, what? That is nuts. So she also gets uh, kind of like a what the hell. But Lauren Murphy getting it done, luckily. Um, anything on uh, this fight, ma'am? Um, yeah, I, I think similar. I thought Joanne Calderwood won the first round. I thought she just, just did what JoJo does and just puts on a striking clinic. I thought round two, I thought Lauren Murphy securing the takedown, getting – uh some pretty good ground and pound in there, uh, going for, uh, you know, getting, uh, getting a lot of ground control time for the second round. And then the third round, I thought, you know, she was going for a lot of takedowns, whiffing on a lot of them. And then I thought that in the striking exchanges, I thought Joanne was getting the best of them. So I thought it was easy one, three Joanne. And, uh, as I told you, I, I had a couple of parlays on, on Lauren Murphy winning by decision because I thought that that's what was going to happen. But, um, after watching that fight, I did not believe that she won that fight. Um, I'm glad that she did because it ended up helping me out in the long yeah, run. Really yeah, did. yeah, <laughs> it, it really helped me out. So I'm not going to complain about it too much. But um, I did think that Joanne Calderwood won that fight. But uh, yeah, Lucky, Lucky is a very fitting name for her because, yeah, that was a very lucky split decision that she's got. She's gotten a few of those in her career. She's gotten one against Andrea Lee like that, too. I, I still won't forget about that fight. I still felt like she lost that fight, and she got the win in that one as well. Um, but five fights in a row for her now. I mean, she can't do anything about the judges, you know. She's just going in there fighting her fight, and I guess judges like her approach to the fight because, you know, we call her the junkyard dog for a reason. She is 
very tough, very gritty. Joe Rogan almost said it too. Like he he kept calling her a dog, but he, he yeah he kept calling her a dog. He, he didn't say junkyard. Dog. Yeah, he didn't say junk. He kept calling her the dog though. I was going to mention that to you that yeah he uh he kept mentioning her that she was a dog, but uh but yeah no just uh, lucky Murphy, lucky junkyard dog dude. That's what she is. You heard it here first. Me and Dorian have been saying this for a minute. She is so scrappy, dude. She will not go away. I will always bet Lauren Murphy by decision unless she fights Valentina and then all bets are off. But uh, so Mofsar Ivloyev versus Hakeem Dawadu, man. You had a bet here, Dawadu by decision or – uh, just uh, like just finish. money line. Or oh, okay, so just main line. Just money line. I I told you this. I was like, no way, dude. <laughs> He's gonna get like decisioned out, and that's what happened. Hakeem at most is tough, dude. Once he fights a grinding just wrestler that he can't really uh, hit, hit with one of these big shots, dude. I he never does well, and I saw this coming a mile away, man. So did the bad uh, guy, because um, if Loyev, like my decision, was like minus 106, pretty much everyone seen this one going. Yeah, no, I thought uh, I thought uh, if Loyev had a, a really good performance, I didn't think that, you know, Dalvin is a very strong dude, so I didn't think that, you know, the takedowns would come easy for if Loyev, but he actually did make it look pretty easy. You could see that there was a difference within the striking because you could see when they were standing, um, even when uh, Hakeem, yeah, well, round, well, even early in the first round when Hakeem was landing a jab, I mean, he jabbed him and uh, Ivoya's eyes started swelling up immediately. And that was when he shot for the takedown in the first round. Second round, he ended up uh, getting the takedown early and just went for a lot of control. But yeah, there in the third round, uh, Hakeem Dawadu almost had a Nate Diaz moment there for a minute when he ended up hitting uh, Ivoya late in the round with a big shot. And yeah, he was uh, making my bet look pretty good right there for a second. But uh yeah, I thought he might have came back and actually pulled the uh, the comeback win. He he pulled a Nate Diaz before Nate Diaz, but uh, but yeah, Vloyev was able to secure the take down there late so he could recover and end up getting the win. So uh, Vloyev definitely a, a scary contender coming up at 145. All right, cool, cool. All we have left here is the early prelims. I already kind of mentioned Alexis Davis got robbed over. Uh, what's her name? Penny Kianza, something like that. I really thought Alexis Davis won round two and three. Oh, Terrence McKinney, dude, the story on this dude, for those of you who don't know, please go look up the story on this dude. He had he had just a wild story. I, I don't want to get too much into it here. Getting it done, seven seconds over Matt the Steamroller from Vola, dude. I'm a Matt Frivola fan. I'm pretty sure you're a Matt Frivola fan, dude. The dude is just a ball of energy, ready to go 100% of the time, but he didn't even have a chance to get it started, dude. Terrence McKinney came out, hit him with the cleanest one, two, out six, seven seconds, whatever it is. Dunzo, man. Uh, anything here or – not really much to say, dude. Uh, yeah, not really much outside of, man, I know uh, Jorge Masvidal was in there counting his blessings that he got it in seven seconds and not uh, six or less. So um, if it wasn't for the glove touch, they probably would have gotten in under the uh, six-second mark. But, uh, but yeah, that was a, a hell of a way to uh, to debut as well like that for Terrence McKinney. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great debut right there to be able to put him out in seven seconds. Uh, it sucks that he hurt his knee afterwards. I hope it's not. Yeah. That's, so that's the only thing. I hope the injury's not too serious. Maybe he can get a quick turnaround if it's not. But hopefully, you know, before his next fight, um, hopefully that knee ain't too serious of an issue. Yeah. Ho- hopefully not. I hate seeing dudes hurt themselves celebrating, dude. Like you saw Johnny well, Walker. Well, well, the well, the bad part was like he did. He, like, well, he Johnny Walker. Wild. Well, right, yeah, like Johnny Walker was doing like a dumb worm and he has his arms flopped up in the air like that. Like Terrence McKinney literally just barely pushed himself up on the cage and then he just kind of just slightly jumped off and then he just landed on his knee weird, you know? I mean, Michael Chandler does a complete backflip and lands perfectly and, you know, nothing happens, but Terrence McKinney barely uh, jumps off the ground and, you know, he, he blows his knee out celebrating. So, I mean, sometimes that's the breaks, but um, hopefully, you know, it's not too serious for him. Yeah. 
this next fight, man, this next one broke my heart. But I'm just going to say at the beginning, what is this dude's name? Uh, was it Steven Peterson, something like that? Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy and fuck that guy. Because I'm allowed to say that as a fan. Fuck that guy. How do you miss weight by three pounds? Uh, clearly winning the fight so far. In the third round, you fake glove touch hit, dude. Like, fuck you, dude. Like, you're just a bad sport and fuck you as a person. I don't even care. Just like, just a scum of the earth person when it comes. Like, you clearly missed on on way on purpose now. Like, after showing that, you had a fake glove touch hit, dude. So you came in overweight on, like, um, on purpose you fake glove touch. You're a bad sport. You don't belong to be in the UFC, dude. Fuck that guy. That's all I'm saying. I was really hoping Chase Hooper got it done by sub there. But even if he didn't, dude, still fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow, having a lot of fire for us. Steven Pearson on the on the early prelim. So oh, didn't man, expect dude. you to uh dude, yeah. Chase the dream Hooper is like, dude, a huge fan favorite. And this dude just came out and just just an awful sport, dude. It's like you you have to cheat. You you have no other option but to cheat. Like you're a cheater. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> like well, I, I don't know if he's uh I don't know if he's Chael Sonnen. I well, I mean I don't know if he's Chael Sonnen or TJ Dillasaw uh cheating, but he's uh, somewhere in between there. Yeah, but it, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really get to see too much of this fight. I just seen uh you know, Chase Hooper pretty much getting dominated for uh, most of the fight Dude, within the, the grappling just, exchanges and stuff like that. I just, like, want to say Chase Hooper's striking has improved, dude. He hit dude with a, a few clean one-twos where, like, it wobbled the guy. Like, you kind of saw he was like, oh, shit, I wasn't expecting that. Chase Hooper has definitely been working on his hands, and it's starting to show. You can see he's still green. He's still raw. But before we move on, fuck that guy for fake love touching and for um, missing weight, even though we all know you did it on purpose at this point. Uh, for us, ZIM, getting it done by decision over uh, the other Italian dude on the card. I'm not even going to try to say it. And uh, the first fight of the night, you wanted like to talk about it. Carlos Felipe versus uh, Jake Collier. Jake Collier used to fight at 185 in the UFC Boy, my guy has <laughs> gained about the 80 pounds, dude. He fights at heavyweights now. Let me know what you thought um, about this fight and why do you want to talk about this one, man? Um, just because, man, one of my uh, one of the guys that I, I've been keeping my eye on here lately, as far as up and comers as the heavyweight division, is Carlos Felipe. Man, that dude, I heard John Anik say it in the commentary uh, during the fight was that he, he looks up to Nick and Nate Diaz and he was really inspired uh, to fight on a same card as a Diaz brother. And, and man, he, he does have a lot of the similar instincts as uh, of the Diaz brothers. Really scrappy. The dude just goes for it. Love when as soon as he lands a punch, you know, he'll look at the other guy and he'll wave him on immediately. Like, come on, come on, let's bang, let's bang. So uh, every one of the fights that I've seen so far in the UFC, now he hasn't really gotten any finishes. A lot of the fights have gone to split decision, but, he, man, he's standing in there. He's taking his opponent's very best shot, and he's delivering them. Man, he might not have the best finishing instincts, but I tell you what, the dude can throw hands. He's entertaining because he does a little taunting with his work as well. And the dude has cardio for days. To be a heavyweight, that dude can just keep throwing and keep moving forward, and it doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, Carlos Felipe, yeah, he, he's starting to become one of my favorite fighters in the heavyweight division as far as, you know, who to watch out for uh, coming up here soon. Yeah, I think he's going to be one of these guys we're going to be hearing about cracking the, cracking the top 15 here before long and, and maybe even maybe even higher up. Fair enough. You heard it here first from my man, D. Rose, Carlos Felipe, one to watch out for. So I guess that's pretty much it for this card, man. I'm glad I bought this one, man. It was a great night of fights. Uh, dude, it was well worth my money. Entertaining. It lasted late, but I was ready for it. Three five-round fights possible, dude. 
Crazy night of fights, man. Um, so before we really get into next week's card, is there any news that you want to talk about? I know of one thing, but anything else aside from that one thing? Uh, I mean, nothing really too significant. I just know that uh, uh, the, like the McGregor fight and stuff coming up within the next little bit. I like the little bit of the uh, promotion going into the mm-hmm. fight. You know, they were playing the the cold or not the cold open, but they were playing the the previews for that fight and stuff like that. But um, in terms of the one topic, not really anything too substantial. All right, fair enough. So let's get into it. Clarissa Shields, dude. Clarissa Shields. I don't want to mistake it. She, don't have her correct you. She is well worth my respect, 100%, dude. Let's get into it for just a second, though. In her fight, you saw she definitely has one glaring hole, but we all knew it was going to be there. She has been training at Jackson Wink. And for not too long, six, seven months at this point, made her pro debut, get getting it done over oh I forgot her name because she was retired and came out of retirement for this fight and then probably going to go back into retirement now awful record what is she like three and seven three and ten something like that you can tell three and seven now I believe like you can tell what she's used for but gave Clarissa some problems dude had her mounted for three rounds or two rounds of, of that fight and then uh, tried to in the third, but you could see the girl was getting kind of gassed. And then, uh, let me think what happened here. A, um, like a sequence happened, like the where it's like, uh, I don't know, she went for a takedown, but she stopped it. And then that girl was just holding on for dear life as she was getting her face pounded into the PFL smart cage, as they call it. I don't really know like what else to say. Congratulations, Clarissa Shields, on your first MMA dub. Uh, I'm really curious to see who they match her up with next because, man, anyone with a halfway decent ground game is going to get her down, dude. And it's just a matter of time of can you do something that she hasn't seen yet to get the finish? So I guess what do you want to say uh, about this one, man? Um, really just a lot of toughness and heart showed by her because, um, for her to be, you know, a multiple, uh, a multiple weight class, multiple time champion and, and boxing. Olympic. Olympic. Yeah. A a two time, two time, yeah. Two time Olympic gold medalist, man. To be as, as, uh, glorified as she is in boxing for her to just take the, the chance, the, the coming to MMA just for the hell of it, just because she's a competitor, man. Um, she doesn't really have to do it. She's doing it because she wants to. And, you know, she's never had any prior MMA experience. She's been training for seven months. And I don't care what Brittany Elkins' record is. She was a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. And she's much more experienced than uh, than Clarissa Shields is in any realm of MMA. So uh, maybe not the boxing. But other than that, yeah, uh, Brittany Elkins is going to be more experienced than her. So... For her to act, for Clarissa Shields to actually get taken down the first two rounds, get controlled, had a couple of sequences there where she almost got an armbar a couple of times, but Clarissa was able to keep her composure. Um, that was really the thing that really stood out to me the most was that a lot of times when she was mounted, she did not show any panic, any pressure. Um, she wasn't able to get uh, Elkins off top of her per se, but she was able to stay out of the dangerous situations and able to get it into the third round where she knew that her striking was going to be more potent. And she starts landing a few shots. Elkin goes for the takedown, misses. And then that's when Clarissa Shields goes to jump on top. Her coaches are literally screaming in the corner to let her stand up. But she even said in the post fight, no, she says she wanted to pound her face in because she knew she was going to have to make a statement in that third round. And for her to transition her, her mindset from boxing to play it kind of safe, to in MMA, she's knowing she's stepping in danger when she's trying to jump into Brittany Elkins' guard going for the ground and pound. And for her to be able to um, keep her composure, to be able to land the ground and pound in the way that she did, that was just a really, just a gutsy performance, just really good um, heart show by her. Of course, she's going to need some development. Hell, she's been training for seven months, and that was her very first MMA fight. Of course, she's going to look green, folks. Um, she doesn't have any type of amateur experience whatsoever. She's jumping right in there professionally. 
Um, so yeah, she's going to have a couple of easy fights here and there or something like that, but she's doing something that a lot of other people wouldn't do. And you just got to show respect to her for it. Is there anything that surprised you in that fight? Um, I, I've seen Clarissa Shields try to throw a leg kick a couple of times. I hope she works on them a little bit more before she tries to throw them because it did not look good when she was throwing those. So that kind of surprised me a little bit. Um, and I was surprised that she was throwing leg kicks considering the fact that Elkin was a takedown, or not a takedown artist, but a brown belt in jiu-jitsu who's pretty decent with her takedown. So um, other than that, not really not really too much, just really her, uh, Clarissa's survival instincts being her first MMA fight. My issue with what I saw, it was just like not – in the third round, in the first and the second, when she would scramble and get up, it was almost like she, her immediate instinct was to dive right back down. And that's not her bread and butter, man. So that a little bit is kind of maybe giving me like a little hesitation. But aside from that, man, just congrats to Shields, man. I'm interested to see what PFL does with her. I also said this to you. If they match her up <clears throat> with Kayla Harrison, it will be the biggest mistake in PFL history because this does not need to happen at all. Kayla Harrison is pretty much UFC ready at this point. We just need to get her pretty much over in the UFC. But um, anything else here, man? Um, no, nah, just a super gutsy performance from her, man. I'm just, I, I don't, they're not going to match her up with Kayla Harrison. One, I don't see Kayla Harrison being a PFL for too much longer. And, uh, two, they know they're going to have to build Clarissa Shields and that she's not going to be able to handle somebody who's a, a glorified judo champ as Kayla Harrison is. So it just wouldn't make any sense to do anything like that. But, um, love that Clarissa is stepping out of her comfort zone to basically pursue greatness. All right, all right. So let's get into this next week's card, man. I don't really want to talk about the whole card. I'm going to be honest. Like, I mean, it's not, not really the, the best card, dude. It's not the best card. It is. It's um, coming off of a stack pay per view, so a lot of times those cards typically do kind of fall uh, short in terms of name value. Yeah. So next week we've got Dan Ige versus the Korean Zombie, dude. The Korean Zombie coming back over, man. His Huge loss to Ortega, man. He just got beat all the rounds by Ortega. Uh, and then Dan Ige, who did Dan Ige fight last? Let me think, let me think. I don't know. Who who, uh, who did he fight? Uh, he, oh, gosh, I can't remember the guy he fought now. It was a guy who was a late replacement. Yeah, um, something, something like yeah but he had he had the one-punch knockout. Um, it, it, was, it was a late replacement guy. Yeah, anyway, so that card, we've got uh, – TKZ, the Korean zombie versus Dan Ike. We've got the Boa Constrictor. Gavin Tucker. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gavin, Tuck got, Gavin Tucker is who it was. We've got the Boa Constrictor, Alexi Olenek versus Sergey Spivak. Tim, the Dirty Bird Means going up against Danny Roberts. Marlon Cheeto Vera going up against Dorian's favorite, Davey Grant. We've got, uh, I guess, a guy named Wellington Terman. I don't know who this guy is going up against Bruno Silva seen that name before and we got matt brown versus diego lima and that is like um like the main card prelims uh we've got verona gingeroba you may know her from a previous fight i don't know uh going up against uh kanako i'm not going to try that one julian rosa uh josh parisian rodriguez martin yeah uh, not not too much on here, man. I want to be honest. Um, JNG Roba, definitely someone to watch out for. She just stands out. I don't know what it is about her. You'll know her when you see her. You're like, oh, no, I know before you've seen. Her I know before. she and, she's and she's got she's got an eye for the fight game. She definitely's she definitely got an does. eye for the fight game. She definitely does, dude. So TKZ Dan Ige, Alexi Olenek, and then. Davy Grant, Marlon Vera. I like all of these, man. Um, they're going to be fun fights. Is there one for sure that you're like, ah, oh, I have to watch that one? Um, of course, like you said, Davy Grant, um, that dude brings a fire every time he fights. But 
man, a guy that we kind of talk about uh, by ourselves all the time is uh, the Dirty Bird, Tim Means. Man, I'm always I'm always down for a good Tim Means scrap. Man, he will, and especially against Danny Roberts too. Danny Roberts is a guy who's not going to back down. It's going to be you know a, a kickboxing match in an MMA uh, arena. So yeah, it's going to that's going to be. That's going to be a hell of a fight. I'm always down for a good uh, ten mean scrap for sure. I'm a little hesitant at the Diego Lima versus Matt Brown fight. Like Matt Brown's just getting a, a little old man, and it's like th- this twilight period for this Cowboys, these Jacarés, like Diego Sanchez. Like it's just getting to that point where it's like, oh man, what's going to happen? Luckily, Maya didn't get slept last night, but it wouldn't have surprised me like to be honest because it's just like it's just that time man it's just we're just starting to get this turnovers but um anything else on that card man or do you want to talk about something else before we get out of here um really just the really just the main event um just really excited for that fight i know dan egate's kind of called for this fight for a little, little bit now with korean zombie and man he has absolutely um put himself in a position to where he's going to be you know, right there for a title shot along with, you know, possibly like a Yaria Rodriguez and, and guys like that. This is a win like uh if he can get a win against Korean Zombie, it'll really put himself back into uh the title shot contention. But I uh, also think that Korean Zombie, he's gonna be hungry coming off that Ortega loss because that was outside of I think I I had uh Korean Zombie winning one round in that fight, but man, it was pretty much one way traffic. So um, I, I'm excited to see the fire that he's going to bring back, man. Both always bring a good fight. So that should definitely, that main event should definitely deliver. It should not, it should not be a boring fight whatsoever. Fair enough. Fair enough. I agree with you. TKZ, man, he's got to show that he's like, he has to show someone that he is still here because man, that last performance was just like, Oh, you're a few steps behind where you need to be, man. Like I, could not see him ever, ever beating that Brian Ortega or Max Holloway. Not that caliber, man. It's just not going to happen. So hopefully TKZ can make some uh, improvements and Dan Ige will definitely show where he's at in this game. So before we get out of here, I just want to make a few statements. Uh, This is a new setup. So this whole time I've been trying to figure out where to look. So I like look down at Dorian, which is down here. So if you see me like looking down, it was me looking at uh, him while he's talking, but I should be looking up here. So I'll try to do better from like, from like now on to like look at the camera when I'm talking like and such. So just, like just a new like setup so just bear with us we're still uh, trying to get a hold of this hopefully it's a lot better though at the very least uh anything like that you want to say uh, like before we get out of here man um yeah kind of excited to to get back into the groove of this and, and start mm-hmm. doing it a little bit more and being a little bit more consistent with it and hopefully with the new setup and everything Hopefully we can nullify these uh the these sound, audio issues. Yeah, hopefully we can nullify these damn audio issues whenever we try to pair up with one another too. And hopefully, uh yeah, hopefully we can uh you know stay consistent moving forward. Yeah, definitely. So if you're here rocking with us still, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. I know he does at, at Hold it down. as well. So once again, thanks. Uh I didn't say at the beginning, but if you're new here, you know what to do. Please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, let us know. Tell us in the comments, what do you want to see next week? Just give us your thoughts and opinions. How do we do aside from my dumb ass looking at him down here when I should have been looking up here? I apologize, but new setup, as I said, new microphone, new placements. We're here. We're rocking with you guys. We're going to be here uh, as much as we can. It, um, If it's a big fight, we'll be here talking to you guys. It's good to be back. We appreciate you guys watching. Remember, stay golden.